last time we looked at the strategic uh, requirements of information for finance and also the tactical requirements for information in the finance. We, we will now look at the operational requirements. The way I have been telling you about uh, strategic and tactical and expanding fair amount on that and not saying so too much about operational information should not lead you to the wrong conclusion that operational information is not uh, all that important. In fact, the operational information is the most important part of any information system because unless you have the operational information collected on a day to day basis regularly and properly and without mistakes, it is just not possible to analyze that to get the tactical information and also further analyze and get strategic information. The primary point I am trying to make is that operational information is essential to do anything further in a system. And the reason I have been harping or emphasizing the need for tactical and strategic information is many organizations are satisfied with collecting the operational information and do not make much use of that. The point is that unless they make use of all the information they have collected day in and day out and analyze it properly, it will not help in uh, making the organization better and make it more profitable. Profitability of any organization comes out of the tactical decisions they take and the strategic decisions they take. But in order to do that, they have to definitely have the operational information which you collect from day to day. In fact, a lot of the uh, emphasis in this course later is going to be on designing operational systems in the sense that operational systems as I said is the raw material from which you start to do anything. So, this importance is to make sure that the raw material is uh, properly collected and you collect the raw correct correct type of material. In other words, you have to collect the operational information which is essential as I said, but also collect all the essential ones which are which are the basic requirements to create the tactical and strategic information. In other words, if you leave out some of the operational information collection, you may not be able to take certain types of tactical and strategic decisions. So, it is extremely important to be able to in some sense work backwards. That is, you ask the question, what is the ultimate objective of meeting the strategy and tactics of my organization? In order to meet those strategic goals and tactical goals, what is the basic data required which I should collect? And uh, so, you, unless you back, work backwards, you may end up in a situation where you collect all types of irrelevant data and uh, forget the important relevant data. And this has been happening in many, many situations and uh, it is somewhat difficult to rectify the situation because it takes a fair amount of effort and money to collect this operational information day to day and uh, put it in a, uh, a database in a properly organized way. And uh, if things are missing, when you really require it, then it is too late, you just uh, time has passed and uh, you may have to make do with whatever you have. So, that is very important to kind of think a little bit ahead in terms of the what is the 
necessary and sufficient data to be collected uh, at the operation level in order to be able to use it for other purposes. Okay. So, this must be clear in your mind. Now, coming back to financial, financial management, the um, operation information which is normally essential to be collected to feed to the tactical and strategic part of the information system is you must have a periodic financial report. In other words, you had to have a, a clarity in terms of how much money has come in as revenue, how much has been spent, how much has been spent in various budget heads as they call it, there is different different areas. There is another other words, how much I have spent on salaries, how much I have spent in buying materials, how much have I spent in uh, buying certain uh, finished products from elsewhere, how much have I spent in my marketing efforts, uh, all these parts in terms of the different areas of uh, spending has to be collected and periodically a report also has to be generated. The period may vary, uh, it may vary uh, like month after month or every uh, week after week depending upon the requirement of the management. But legally at the end of 3 months or what is called a quarter, every company is supposed to create a financial report to be submitted to the shareholder of the company and also made public in the newspapers for the uh, uh, information of the public at large. So, that the shareholders know what is the actual state of the company. This of course, uh, will not have anything about every day what I have spent, but a quarterly report in terms of at the end of the quarter a consolidated account of what I have spent under various heads. To, so, that the uh, uh, shareholders kind of understand what has been spent in for what areas and is the company doing well in terms of the revenue they are earning compared to the expenses they have made and is there a profitability which is coming, what is the earning which they are getting for a share they have bought and things like that. That is called a financial report which is uh, the, uh, uh, the as I said periodicity varies, but for top management information the periodicity may be anywhere varying between a week and a, a month. Uh, it is not at the end of the quarter you do not give the entire information to the top management. You have to give it much more frequently to the top management to be able to uh, take some corrective action before it is too late. So, the operational information of having this financial report and setting it up the uh, chain in terms of higher levels of management in the hierarchy is the uh, job of the people who do the data processing at the operational level. Similarly, budget you know at the beginning of the year a budget is allocated for each of the different areas in a company, the functional areas. I talked about the functional areas uh, which is production, marketing and uh, now we, we talk about finance, R and D and um, human resource. There are many all this primarily six areas of functions. For each of these areas I have to I, I, I create a budget at the beginning of the year. So, that the, the main idea of a budget is that I have an overview of what I expect to earn this year, how much uh, do I decide to spend and what is going to be the taxes which will be going and what will be the net income which will come to the company and uh, hopefully there will not be a loss. I mean when you make the budget you do not make a budget for a loss, you always make a budget which is somewhat little bit rosy in terms of your revenue picture that is your, your earning picture and but then on the other hand as I said corrective action needs to be taken if it is if it is updated regularly. So, but the status periodically again the period may be say uh, uh, every two weeks or every month. Normally, a month is not bad, but uh, depends on the nature of the company. 
and what is meant by budget status is that you effectively say this much of money is allocated to your uh, functional area, you have spent this much money and uh, this much money is left over for spending. So, that uh, if you overspent your target for that particular period in your own mind, then you take corrective action. Uh, either you decide to save or that if I have not spent enough, I would uh, try to spend it more. Okay. And also, if the top management also gets this information on uh, how much uh, uh, the what is the budget status of all the different areas, if they find that one particular functional area, like say the, the R and D manager, has not spent any money at all, or much much less than what is allocated, then there is a likelihood that he may lose that money because the uh, the guys uh, in human resource may has overspent, and so their budget may be on the negative side. So you might reallocate your budget, saying that because you have not spent the money, you don't probably need it and so I will give it to somebody else. So, there is al always a, it is not, does not mean that you should uh, spend the money unnecessarily, but you should make sure that what you budgeted, you properly plan. So, uh, that in order to do that, you have to be informed and that information comes from the operational information. And of course, for the finance manager, he has to produce a so called tax return. That is, uh, every month, there is something called a uh, taxation direct, directed at source. If for employee's uh, salary, uh, tax is due and that is deducted from the salary and directly paid to income tax department. And wherever you are distributing money to different uh, uh, persons, depending upon the law at any given time, you deduct the appropriate amount of tax and deposit in the government account. And you make that uh, uh, periodic report of uh, so called TDS and nowadays of course, there is new tax called service tax which has come and for various services which the company receives, a service tax has got to be also levied and this has got to be deposited in the, uh, in the account. So, it is a question of uh, if you are a service organization, you have to collect, uh, you have to show how much of serv what services you have done how much money you have collected and what is the percentage which you uh, have to deposit. Uh, for an example, what I mean by uh, service tax is suppose you are running a travel agency. If you are running a travel agency, then you are taking commissions from the uh, or uh, from uh, airlines and uh, to, to kind of uh, depending upon the amount of sale which you have made of tickets. On this uh, commission, which you have made, which is your earning, there is, a, there is service tax which is due because for the services you are provided to the customer. Normally, most of the, it is passed on to the customer, but uh, the uh, responsibility is on you to actually put the money back into the government's uh, account. Another uh, operational information which is required is share transfers. Every public limited company. Uh, which is traded in the market, you know, share market. Everybody, every day, every day, you will hear in the uh, news about the Sensex uh, and uh, Nifty and things like that. These are all uh, reports of the performance of the share market. What is the average? Are the share prices going up or going down, or things like that? So, share transfers means the com the people who own shares in the company can buy and sell. Whenever somebody buys and sells, you have to transfer the shares or in other words, uh, the, uh, from one owner sells it and another, another person buys it. The owner who has sell, sold it, you have got to remove uh, his holding from your account of his share holdings and credit it to the person who has bought. In other words, there is a shareholder account which every company is supposed to maintain because the shareholder is ultimately the person who is making your company work I and mean, that is his money you are using to run the company. So, there is a, an important even though so called people who start the company called promoters have a certain amount of money by and large in most companies it turns out the promoter's share is less than about 10 percent of the total capital of the company. 
almost 90 percent of the capital comes not only from the, from the general public, but also from the financial institutions like banks, maybe from insurance company, from uh, uh, primarily many of the uh, what the what the what's called financial uh, organizations which invest in uh, in shares. So the this will be and of course nowadays in India mutual funds are very uh, uh, very prevalent. So mutual funds also own a fair amount of shares of uh, a company, and uh, they in turn get get it from. Uh, they are clients who go to that mutual fund. But the point is share transfers that have got to be uh, kept. Apart from share transfers, uh, the operational information which has got to be given is also that what is the price fluctuation in the share over uh, day, uh, daily. And at the end of a, a quarter, you have to tell the shareholders as well as the management that uh, the highest price at which the share was sold the lowest price at which the share was sold, what the average price of the share during the quarter and also how many transactions took place during the quarter. That is how many shares are traded because the higher the volume of trading of shares that means there is more interest in the company in the public. If their trading volumes are very low that means people consider their company to be almost dead because there is there not there is not much interest in buying and selling people buy and sell shares of companies which, which are doing well okay so that is also another piece of information to the shareholders and of course profit and loss account that is what is the uh, how much profit have i made and of course uh, the profit and loss account is not a daily thing daily you collect the information collect all the data about uh, sales uh, about receipts and so on but Profit and loss is consolidation at the end of say a month uh, or, uh, or two weeks whatever. Uh, that means how much I, the profit and uh, very simply speaking uh, you um, subtract the money you have spent okay, from the money you have collected and the difference is the profit. If it is difference is positive then it is profit, the difference is negative then it is a loss. Okay. So, the uh, at least you really know if you are making a loss, how much loss am I making? How can I make up for that loss? So, that at least by the end of the year, I come up with a with the profit. Uh, normally, people say a company is in the red uh, if it is making a loss because they normally use a red ink to show a negative value and a black ink to show a positive value. So, when you say company is in the black, that means the company is doing very well, it has got a good profit and as a red means it is uh, it is down, it is uh, it is not making any profit. Okay. So, this is a payment and receipts and a pay, you, know, you owe money to uh, your suppliers, you got to uh, pay as soon as I said, I said when you are buying a store from some um, uh, some company, some, some items, you got to pay as soon as you uh, check this quality and take it into stock. So, unless you pay regularly and timely payment, uh, your supplier will uh, also delay his supplies. So, to get timely supplies, you got to pay in a timely fashion. And so, that kind of a payments, uh, regular payments, generation of bills, generations of uh, uh, checks and things like that had been on, uh, 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 automated. On a on a computer nowadays, all checks are all printed on the machine, and the uh, checks are all mailed out to uh, people. And also, there is a, uh, a trend where the checks may not even be mailed. Uh, if you give the bank account number and which bank you are holding an account, the money can directly go by so-called electronic clearing service. That is, from your bank account, it can go directly to the bank account of the uh, person who billed you without going through the uh, intermediary of uh, courier or post and so on. So, there is no possibility of loss of the checks and also advantage of so called electronic clearance is that the uh, uh, clearing or depositing from one account to the other account is almost instantaneous. In other words, if you, 
if you uh, debit your account, it gets immediately credited to the other account uh, within a day, definitely. And so, by next day, you will have some positive things in your in your bank. So, this is again uh, something which has come out out of networking and computerization, the automatic electronic clearing service, which uh, clears your checks. And uh, lastly, of course, you have point fund, you have to uh, and the payroll and uh, these are two important things. Payroll is month after month, you got to be able to create your uh, uh, payroll for the employees. What do you mean by payroll for the employees? Is that the gross paid which is due to the employee, the uh, deductions which you make for various purposes like you may make a deduction for private fund, you may make a deduction for taxation. So, there are a number of deductions and after you reduce all these things, you have a net payable and that net payable is uh, what is normally deposited directly to the account of the employee. So, there is a, this is called a payroll, payroll. The payroll is periodic. Every month, normally in India, every month the payroll is created and the payroll at the end of the payroll automatically all the uh, debits and credits to various accounts take place. And uh, this is an essential operational, operational information. And based on that payroll itself, you derive the tax taxation. And this taxation is directed at source because you are not paying the employee that tax. And once you do that, that is to go to the uh, government's account right away. You cannot delay it. If you delay it, then you are supposed to be uh, working, acting against the law because what you have done is you already taken the money from somebody, but you are not giving it to the person to whom it is due. So, naturally the person to whom it is due, you will complain. So, you got to essentially be able to uh, deposit the uh, so called tax deducted source immediately as soon as you deduct it. Similarly, prime fund is something which is uh, uh, a due for the employee for the retirement of the employee. And there is certain amount of prime fund which is contributed by the employee and a certain contribution by the company. So, these two together would go into a prime fund account which may be uh, with a third agency, it may not be kept in your company. So, this prime fund deduction also has by law uh, has to be deposited uh, within a certain period to the uh, prime fund authority. Whoever is uh, whoever is running that authority. So, both private fund and TDS are statutorily got to be directed and credited and these are things which are which come as an aftermath of the payroll. This, this is operational. It is month after month after month and of course, in, in some foreign countries, payroll may be even uh, a week after week after week or even a two weeks after two, you know, in America for instance, it is normally two, every two weeks you get paid and uh, in some other countries like Australia, it is every week you get paid. So, this is uh, depends upon the uh, way in which a particular, particular country works. In our country, it turns out to be normally monthly you get paid, you do not get at a, a more frequent intervals. Now, the next area which uh, is extremely important. Uh, nowadays in uh, any organization is human resource because uh, the economy of the country of the entire world is changing. The economy is changing and going towards what is known now as service economy uh, and service economy depends very much on people. What I mean by service economy, if you take our country for instance, the uh, number of jobs which have grown very rapidly is in the area of uh, software services. There is uh, software companies which are actually doing software work for companies abroad. There are such software services, services company. They are creating programs and software for many clients and those clients are uh, very often uh, not in the country, they are, they are outside the country. Now, uh, the call centers which are all there which uh, essentially depend upon people. The people are the ones who are manning all that uh, 
uh, computer terminals and telephones and so on and answering all kinds of questions which come from all over the world and sometimes even uh, are subject to abuse. I mean, but by and large, uh, uh, the call centers are a very large uh, operation in terms of growth and employment, particularly of the younger generation. And uh, they work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and uh, all types of shifts, early morning shifts and so on. And uh, But by and large, the point I am trying to make is that human resource there is important to be able to keep your human resource happy and have the right human resource to be able to do these kinds of businesses effectively and make a profit. If it turns out that your uh, human resource is not all that happy with you, then of course uh, they will leave you very quickly because there are competing companies which are willing to offer them better terms maybe once they get experience and so on. So, it is very important for companies to pay attention to the uh, human resource because that is the asset of the company. Now, uh, the study information when it comes to human resource management is long range requirements at different levels. How many people do I require for the coming year or so? So, that that estimate I require to be able to recruit and also recruit at the right levels or all, the, all of them are may not be uh, freshers from colleges. Okay, some of them may be substantial number of them may be freshers from colleges, but they also require people with experience, say three years experience, four years experience, ten years experience, and so on. And they also require people with expertise in different areas or functional areas, like somebody who has experience working uh, in, a, in a finance company may be required for uh, creating a, a software for uh, a mutual fund. And or if you are, uh, if you have been working with a uh, with a hospital management system and so on, if you are going to create a, a information system for a hospital, then you would that that knowledge about how the hospitals function, what kind of uh, information do they require, and all that will be useful for uh, for a person for this company because they are going to the, the uh, trying to sell their services. So experience is essential in such a case. So, the top management has to decide how many they have to employ because once in a while you see the newspapers saying Infosys has announced that this year we are going to recruit 4000 people okay, or 5000 or whatever. These companies also give make it known that they are going to recruit so many people because I said human resources is an essential part of all these companies. And when they say I am going to recruit 4000 people, what it really means to the general public is that the company is doing well. So, they, they, they are going to recruit more people because they have a lot more jobs. Okay. And uh, that is essentially what the top management has to decide. How much they recruit, do they also publicize it or just, just keep it as a within themselves. But by and large companies have, uh, they do publicize it. Okay. And, uh, how to train and develop them. See, this is also very, very important because when a student comes out of a college, no company really expects the student to become productive from day one. They all train that student and they only want trainable students who come and uh, put them th through some training and the training is reasonably rigorous and uh, the training time is something which is well spent because the student really comes to know about what the company does, the culture of the company, the prospects of the company and communication skills, many other things which are important for running a software business for instance is taught in the, in the training center. Uh, three days ago I saw a big uh, article in a magazine called Fortune which says uh, the Taj Mahal of uh, training facilities is has been set up in Mysore by Infosys. Okay, and is uh, and you have your pictures and uh, rather that is a huge training center which has been set up because they are going they have to train four to five thousand people every year. So they had to have hostels, they had to have teachers to train them, they have to have uh, computers and so on. So these uh, uh, 
uh, expenses has got to be decided and you also have to look at the policies and what, what training do I give okay? and how, how long is it 2 months, 3 months, 4 months those, those ideas and uh, also policies on the welfare and facilities uh, that is what kind of uh, policies do I have on um, for the welfare. Uh, one of the uh, important policies which many companies follow now is uh, known as ESA that is uh, employees stock op option plan. What it meant by employees stock option plan is that when an employee joins the company, they tell him that I will give, I will become make you a shareholder of the company. So, you have an equal stake in the profitability of the company, but these shares will not be given to you unless you work for the company for 3 years. Okay? At the end of 3 years, I will give you the share because not at uh, zero cost, but I will give you the share at a reasonable cost uh, determined by the current share price in the market. Maybe I will give you some concession, whatever. Uh, that kind of a decision is called employee stock option plan and that is a very strategic decision. Whether to do it or not to do it is the top management's um, requirements. And uh, uh, it, it is, there are both pros and cons for this. Some companies give ESOP, some companies do not provide ESOP, but uh, these are things which are strategic uh, requirements of any top management. And uh, uh, practical thing, uh, practical information consists of uh, uh, performance appraisal. You know, you have to, uh, how do you appraise the performance? Because performance appraisal is, appraisal is important to be able to uh, uh, promote a person to higher, higher positions. And not only that, in many of the companies today, the yearly increase in salary is not automatic in terms of a certain increment, which is normally the uh, what is being done in, in government. Government does an increment year after year after year and there is no change in the increment. Whereas, companies prefer to make a variable increment. If you perform very well, they give you higher, so what, what is called raise in your salary or increase in your salary. If you have not done too well, then they give you an average. Uh, amount. Of course, they will not reduce your salary, but they will not increase it too much. But there is a policy has to be done in terms of on how do I appraise and how do I use this appraisal to be able to uh, uh, improve this or increase the salary of a person or do appropriate uh, incentives for the employee. So, the uh, uh, the, there are many, many ways of performance appraisal, appraisal. Very often, many companies ask a, an employee to give a self appraisal. See, at the end of a, a year, they ask, uh, what do you think you have done during the year? And they give a certain format for them to fill up. And uh, then the manager kind of opines on uh, whether what the person has told, uh, to what extent it is, uh, uh, it is right to what extent it is not right and so on. The point is that to some extent they try to make the, the employee also feel that it is a part of the appraisal process. So, these are kind of psychological things which a, a tactical manager has to look at. And uh, demographic breakup, uh, what is meant by demographic breakup of, uh, of, of personnel is that are there you know, it turns out that in some companies, not in infotech, because in infotech companies almost everybody is very young. I mean, they are all, uh, the average age will be around uh, uh, 30 years, 35. As a person who is 50 years, 55 years old is considered an old man in a, an IT company. But if you look at uh, normal companies, what I mean by normal companies are the older uh, like automobile manufacturing companies like uh, Tata Engineering or a company which is uh, uh, heavy electricals, uh, Bharat Heavy Electricals or Hindustan Aeronautics. Many of these older companies have employees in all age, age groups from the top uh, from, from ages uh, ranging from 60 to uh, 
2025. So, if it turns out that there is a, a lot of people nearing retirement, then they have to make sure that uh, experience, because the people who are experienced are going to retire. So, you really have to plan ahead of time and you don't bunch everybody uh, who is retiring at that time. In other words, you try to make sure that there is a certain kind of demographic makeup and planning so that you induct fresh blood as well as you induct people with appropriate uh, experience at different levels so that your demographic makeup does not make uh, system uh, fragile, fragile in terms of saying that suddenly whole lot of people are going to leave uh, in a very critical area of the company. Okay. And uh, in a production company like a car company, they have to decide on is there any production bonus. In other words, uh, uh, you, you kind of uh, uh, if you have come up with a higher productivity, you have, have you have to have some measure of productivity and you come up with a better higher productivity, then you give, give better incentive. Somewhat like you know, in a software company, it may be uh, apart from productivity, it might productivity might mean error free code which comes out. There is another words with good quality code comes out and uh, you have met the minimum requirement and exceeded it in terms of your quality as well as your quantity, then you may be given a production incentive. And uh, the other tactical information is in terms of morale of uh, people, keeping the morale high is very, very important. So, you have to kind of assess periodically what is the morale. Okay. Are, are there too many people leaving? See, there is a person who is leaving, normally most companies try to talk to, the, talk to them, uh, why, why is he leaving? This is called a uh, employee, when he leaves, is called a debriefing session. Uh, manager uh, kind of sits or from the human resource division, sits with that person to find out uh, what is uh, bugging him. Now, is there something which is he is unhappy about, which can be uh, rectified so that other people also do not start leaving. So, the morale and uh, why there is too much turnover in the company, you know, the turnover, average turnover is expected to be around 15 percent in a company, which is normal in many of the infotech companies. Suddenly, if it goes to 30 percent, then there is something wrong, you know, and uh, higher turnover means that you have to recruit more people and they have to train them. So, it is a cost. So, unnecessarily your cost is going to increase. So, you have to make sure the turnover is, is reduced and uh, how to kind of reduce the turnover. Of course, as you know many companies give all kinds of facilities uh, to reduce, to make you happy, so that you will not leave the company. ESOP is one such thing. Uh, absentee reduction, there are too many absentees. Uh, maybe they have to start a crash. Uh, the crash uh, for the uh, ladies who have children who are uh, absent too often and so on. So, these kinds of uh, absent reduction. Leave and overtime policies, how much is it 15 days leave in a year, uh, is it uh, uh, one month leave or do you compel them to take the leave or do you give them money instead. Many companies have a policy that you have to take the leave and you cannot uncash that leave. Uh, because they feel that uh, at least required for you to refresh yourself and come back. Another important thing in many of the uh, companies is in terms of training of the existing people. So, there is a training of the inductees or the new freshers is essentially a 4 month or 5 month whatever is a fairly long period. But training of people who are already there is also very essential because particularly in our field, uh, the technology is changing very rapidly. Uh, of course, I, I say something about infotech because I know more about it, but then uh, uh, technology in all areas is progressing very fast. In even in motor car production now, uh, 5 years ago, uh, many motor cars did not have any microprocessors for control of the uh, various functions of the motor car. Today, almost every motor car has got one or two microprocessors inside them to be able to uh, get better performance out of the motor car. So, technology there has changed. 
okay. The old technology is gone and uh, similarly the carburetor and other things are all changing. So, this need for updating the knowledge of older employees because they have studied much earlier and they, they must be regularly upgraded, updated. So, many companies have a policy saying that every year uh, just like giving 15 days leave, there will be 15 days allocated to training and uh, some companies even go up to the extent of one month. In every 12 months, one month the person has got to be trained in terms of upgrading the skills, upgrading the knowledge because they are all knowledge based companies. All these companies are knowledge based and more and more companies are becoming knowledge based in as I said the 20th, 21st century is supposed to be the century of knowledge based industries and uh, that is one of the reasons why we feel that we have an edge because we have a lot of very very intelligent young people and uh, they can be they can compete very well in that knowledge area with the rest of the world. So, this upgrading and training is also very important and deployment policies in other words you know uh, uh, if a person is working in one section for too long the person may get bored. So, you may transfer the person to some other areas and, and give a certain width or depth of experience in different areas in, a, in, the, in the company so that he gets matured over time. And uh, see if you are doing the same thing again and again and again you feel somewhat bored with that job. So, it is better to kind of train you and shift you to something else. These are the deployment policies which uh, the company has to consider. The, uh, all these in order to be able to get all these things you require operational information as I said we have to collect it on a regular basis. The tactical information I talked about at fair length because as I said this is quite important. Now, uh, the operational information which is required to be able to get this uh, is uh, the uh, various types of data which you collect like you know you have uh, having assessed a person routine assessment. Uh, you have to kind of keep a record of what, what is the kind of you may decide on certain grades which you give to each employee okay, and that has got to be recorded in the employee's record. So, there is a record which is kept for each employee and the routine assessment records and what incentive is given has to be noted down in this record for the employee. And you have to have for the whole company a skills inventory. In other words, you keep a complete uh, picture of all the employees in the company. In the, what I mean by complete picture is that you have the name of the person, number of years of the company, the areas in which the person has worked and uh, his general performance which has is, which is worked in all these areas. And um, what is the, the kind of specific skills he has? In other words, he is a, he is a Java expert, uh, that is he is expert in particular language or he is a, a, a visual basic expert or he is a person who has uh, done a lot of work in databases. Uh, or it can be somebody who is a, an expert in finance management. Uh, so, the there will be functional areas like suppose a finance company is coming to you then there is a person who could be deployed for that. So, once you have a skills inventory that is a knowledge base in terms of what, what knowledge they have and their experience levels and so on and performance levels. When a new project comes to your company before you accept the project you say whether you have human resource available for that project to be successfully completed and also re reallocate people from this what I would say the database of uh, skills and uh, take out people and form a group and make that group responsible for this new project which has come to the company. So, skills inventory, loans, advances, recoveries and so on there is these are things which uh, every employee is given a loan and you have to recover it and things like that. Leave record, how much leave the person has taken 
and these are all the things which uh, deals with the uh, human resource. The last functional area which uh, I am going to talk about is R&D, research and development. In that we, I would call it research, design and development because many companies have also design requirements. What I mean by design requirements, research and design is uh, if you take say a, a product company which makes products like a motor car company which makes uh, motor cars and uh, uh, you, you really need to have a, a, a new type of model coming out, then this uh, you have to do some kind of redesign of the existing car and uh, that redesign is something which is a part of what, what R and D does that is design part is there. Similarly, with electronic product you have a design part which is done for that for that product that looks of the product and things like that. So, this is uh, primarily what I mean by design and research, research design and development. R and D research and development is extremely important nowadays in many many new companies is crucial in pharmaceutical companies so called biotechnology or pharmaceutical companies actually invent new drugs. They invent new drugs for uh, curing certain ailments uh, and these, these drugs had to be produced fairly fast even though one would like to have a, a production very fast in terms of the production of the, the uh, medicine or the molecule which is used for say fighting a certain type of viruses and so on. It requires a fair amount of uh, research in looking at a lot of compounds and then finding out which are the effective compounds which are not the effective compounds where computer simulation is used and human trials are used. So, there is a lot of work which goes on in research uh, before any, any medicine comes into the market. And even in, uh, when there is a medicine which is uh, available in the market, if you want to reproduce it, you, are, you have to do a new design of a plant. <coughs> so, this plant design also requires a, a fair amount of work to be done. I was talking about the R and D part of any functional area and importance of R and D. So, if you look at the strategic requirement of information, the company has to decide what products are to be developed. If it is from pharmaceutical company, they have to decide what products they have to develop. If it is a electronics company, they also again have to decide what products. Even if it is a motor car company, if they are producing certain model. Uh, what uh, uh, what new model they have to come up with and so on. What types of improvements are required in the existing products? What long range research is more promising? Look at the long range and what is up and coming and do I look ahead a little bit and do something about it? And uh, will technical collaboration with another company uh, which uh, will be helpful for my company to make my uh, product better. So, these are uh, issues which uh, the top management has to look at and uh, uh, this is crucial in terms of a long range what direction the, uh, the company's products will take, what direction uh, I will have like a uh, simple example I will give is that of Apple computers. The Apple computers was one of the earliest computer makers who was making this uh, uh, desktop machines and they are the first one to come up with this idea of windows. Uh, it was later on borrowed by Microsoft and made more popular. But Apple computers even though they, their machine and their general, general uh, user interface was much better, uh, one mistake they made was to make their uh, the hardware a strategic mistake <laughs> effectively is that the hardware was uh, 
details are not made known to anybody. So, nobody else could really make any kind of software for it. And even the operating system which they made to make up applications for their operating system, it is not easy. Whereas, Microsoft has a strategic advantage of you know, working with an open, open uh, architecture of IBM. And so, they have a much larger market. It is not a proprietary market unlike Apple. So, the Apple sales were going down. They went, went down considerably and out of the say uh, 100 machines sold in the world, uh, about 90 machines or 90 to 95 machines will be IBM machines, IBM architecture machines and about 5 percent will be Apple architecture machines, even though the Apple machines are superior in terms of the quali quality uh, and so on. Now, when they thought about this, they said they had probably had to come up with a new product which is, uh, which is going to capture the market. So, they came up with so called iPod, which is a music uh, download device, handheld device, where you can download music from the internet. And uh, per track, you pay some 99 cents in America, and so you kind of come up with the latest uh, hits and so on, you can download onto your handheld thing. So, it is somewhat uh, like your uh, earlier Sony, Sony's uh, machine with a tape and so on. Now, it becomes a lot more uh, interesting for young people because there is a portable small music player which is very good quality and also good looks. In fact, uh, Apple spent a lot of time, Steve Jobs spent a lot of time in deciding on the looks of that, uh, looks and feel and the user interface. So, it is easy to use, a lay person can use it, it is quite rugged and so on. Of course, technology is ripe, things like flash memories came, uh, internet came, all those things made it possible. But then the question is, he suddenly dec decided that computers are not really making me much money, why not I go to a new product, which is uh, quite different from what he is doing, but somewhat related, because uh, it is also based on a microprocessor and so on. So, this is what is meant by uh, new product development and getting to new products. Okay. So, the uh, uh, as I said improvements of course, there is again <coughs> always important to like for instance, if you take the operating systems, you know there is a, a, a version, every, there is my Windows uh, 2000 is there, then suddenly they decided they come up with a Windows XP then they said Windows XP home version. So, the whole idea of why they went on with all these product changes or kind of upgrades as they called it is to kind of have a market continuously updated and they are getting, getting to sell new products as they go along. If they do not change the model and make the product somewhat better at least in the perception of the general public, then their sales will kind of becomes, become stagnant. So, they cannot have new revenue which is coming in. So, these are the kind of things which the top level has to take up. Like now, Bill Gates is looking at the next next generation operating system for the uh, beyond windows and they always has buzz in the market and put things in the internet and so on. But by and large, it is a going to be a, 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 a some change which will, which will come out of the strategic decision of uh, in this case the top management namely Bill Gates and company. Okay. And again looking at long range research, what technical liability, these are the ideas of strategy. Uh, tactical information for tactical requirement of our R and D is you have a certain goal to meet in a certain time for research, but you cannot ahead of time decide what exactly what path I will take in research because you get unexpected results as you go along because you are doing something new, it is not something old. Okay. So, you have to set up inter intermediate goals, what progress I have made, what I thought I will come, how do I change my uh, path and things that type. Okay. And uh, also, I had to check the equ equipment availability and select the appropriate equipment for the uh, type of work I have to do and uh, proportion of resources to allocate a different project because R and D may have many projects going on simultaneously. Okay. And uh, for each project, 
I allocate certain resources and uh, I had to kind of monitor uh, determining the proportion, I had to I determine what proportion to put on what. If something is promising, I put more money on the debt, something which is little too long range and not too promising, I put less money. This is a tactical decision taken by the R and D manager. People, which who are the right people to put on the right right job, but to research particularly and design, it is extremely important to put the right people on the right job. Otherwise, it becomes a you know as I said, a, 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 a round peg in a square hole or <laughs> a square square peg in a round hole or things like that. Wrong 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 choice of people. Uh, in fact, similar related research projects are taken by competitive companies. So, in other words, is, is there competition which is going on? Are there competitive companies which are also doing something similar? And what should I do about it? Okay. Should I uh, change my direction? And as far as operations are concerned, I have to look at the what are the goals which are set, what is the progress I have made against the goals, how much money I have. Uh, uh, allocated, what is budgeted, that means how much is allocated and how much is the actual expense, over spending or under spending, uh, what is the other equipment, are they outstanding and uh, are there, is there a outstanding uh, kind of product which is there, these are things which I have to kind of look at. In operation information, you have to look at the progress against the goals. And uh, that is uh, day to day, and uh, day to day you have to see see that, okay. But your expenses versus actual expenses and status outstanding orders. So these are issues which are uh, in R and D, uh, and the there are also a lot of other things which I have to consider in terms of R and D, which I not get into great detail. Uh, things like as I said. Uh, the uh, particularly the critical parts in terms of deployment of people and so on. So, so far we have essentially talked about all functional areas, the uh, uh, areas, the requirements in terms of strategic requirement, the operational requirement, the uh, strategic, tactical and operational requirements of all these areas and explain all these in reasonably, reasonable length. And by now you will have some clear idea of the distinction between these and also the fact that the operational information is essential to get the other information. Now having done that, next question you have to really ask is what is the, what is really, what, what the information I provide, I will ensure that the information is the right quality. So, the question really is what is meant by quality of information? When I talk about quality of information, there are a number of parameters which I have to consider. So, the, the it is a very quality sometimes in the mind of the people, but not always true. So, you can also quantify quality in a specific way. So, the idea is to be able to quant look at the different components of quality and make sure that each, of each component of that quality requirement is met in whatever information system I design or develop. So, the qualities are something which is very important which you have to keep at the back of your mind while you develop the system. So, this is what I will talk about at a greater length in the next lecture.